Good morning again. And for those of you who are watching us live stream, I am Nancy Carver. I am filling in for Pastor Nancy while she was on vacation. Um, if you would please stand as you are able. And as we light the candles, if you could uh, sing, I Come With Joy, it is in your hymnal on 617. Join me in the call to worship found on the screens or in your bulletin. How wondrous a new heaven and a new earth. They hold bruised and angered, fearful and alienated, will pass away. In its place, God will offer new hope and peace. God will dwell out with the past people forevermore. Worship the Lord who is about to do a new thing. Praise God, who established God's reign in the heart of God's people. Amen. Now let us join together in our opening hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. It's in your hymnal, page 139.
Now let us join together in our opening prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are grateful that you have called us together this day, drawing us from darkness to the glory of your light. May our spirits rejoice at the good news you have for us today. Open our hearts to your healing love, for we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. And now we have our children's message. Greetings, I'm Carly. Talking about your faith is something that is really important and also really personal. Proclaiming isn't just reading the Bible and saying those exact words. Who you are is also a part of what you talk about because your story is important too. In today's Bible story, we meet Timothy. Timothy was someone who proclaimed and he was mentored by Paul. His story was an important part of his faith. You see, Timothy was taught by his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. These powerful women in his life taught him about God and God's love, and they were an important part in his faith story. As a community of faith, we all get to learn from one another. Who teaches you about the Bible? And what are you excited to talk about and tell others? Sharing your faith out loud is an important practice that we do together. When we learn from each other, we grow because there's so much more we can learn together than alone. One of my favorite things that I have learned is how to sew. My grandmother loves to sew and created all my mom's clothes when she was growing up. When my mom was old enough, my grandmother taught her. My mom didn't like making clothes, but she loved to make blankets and sheets for beds. She learned how to sew from my grandmother, and then she got to make her own things with it. Both my mom and grandmother also sewed things to give away to help people in need. Now my mom is teaching me to sew, and I like helping people with my sewing too. I really like making pillowcases from colorful prints, and now I'm teaching my brother what I'm learning. Wonder is about experiencing the gift of learning from others, and then choosing what we want to do with it. The more we experience and learn, the more we can proclaim and talk about our faith in new ways. Timothy learned about God from his grandmother and mother and then chose to share with all those he had met. I proclaim by talking to my friends about sewing with my family and telling them that we make things for people who are in need. That's one way we show God's love. It's how I share about my faith. How do you share yours? Now, it's time for you to wonder. As the children head off to Sunday school, we'll have our scripture reading for today. Our scripture is from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the brothers and sisters who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why do you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill, and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. 
He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord and how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Let us pray. Be with us, Lord. Open our ears, minds, and hearts so that you may hear, we may hear you speak to us. I pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning begins by telling us that circumcised believers were criticizing Peter for meeting with Gentiles. You see, many Jews following the way felt it necessary to follow the 600 some odd laws contained in Jewish scripture as Jesus was a faithful Jew. Dietary laws and circumcision were considered crucial. This was leading to a conflict between two schools of thought. Those who felt that only those who followed the laws and scriptures could receive salvation through Jesus and the other side, those who felt that Gentiles believed, who believed in Jesus could also receive salvation. Peter responds to this criticism by relating his vision in which the Holy Spirit is telling him to eat items that he would have considered unclean. When he resists, the Spirit tells him that what God has made clean, you must not call profane. Peter is coming to the realization that God's love, as given through Jesus Christ, should be offered to all who desire it. He is embodying the greatest commandments given by Jesus Christ, which is found in Matthew, verses, Matthew 22, verses 37 uh, through 40. It's found in Mark, chapter 12, 30 and 31, and it's found in Luke, chapter 10, 20 through 5 through 28. Each gospel says it quite a little bit differently, but basically it says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest command and the first commandment. And the second like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus answers the question of who our neighbor is with the parable of the Good Samaritan. Our neighbor is everyone, regardless of race, beliefs, etc. Jesus does not say love only those who strictly follow all of the laws found in Hebrew scripture. So how can we spread the good news of love of God through Jesus Christ if we limit, our, limit ourselves to those just like us? Peter is realizing the important of, importance of moving beyond the laws and standards that he has known all his life. He has been made aware that salvation offered through Jesus Christ does not just come through following the plethora of laws found in Hebrew scriptures, but through God's grace that God gives to those seeking it. There is much division in society. There always has been. If we look at the major world religions, we see different sects in each religion and different ways of interpreting the tenets of each faith. In Christianity alone, we find major differences. Catholic versus Protestant, Baptist versus Lutheran, Methodist versus Presbyterian, etc. As people read and interpret scriptures through their own eyes and experiences, they start to disagree on how they should live a Christian life. As a result, the church is divided many times. I think if we ask God who is on the right track, he would say, yes, they all have merit. As a teacher, I was expected to teach not only to mainstream students, but to those who didn't process information in the same way as the majority. 
A teacher incorporates a variety of learning methods to reach students with different learning styles. A little lecture, a little reading, some 